Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll review the two basic types of variation, common cause variation and special cause variation. Understanding each of them can make all the difference in how we identify and improve them. It may help to have reviewed all the lessons leading up to the previous lesson on comparing distributions, so please check those out if you haven't already done so. But for now, let's begin by quickly reviewing the concept again on variation or spread. Well, we've said before how variation measures how spread out the data points are from the central tendency, again, that being the mean or the median. And we've described before how we might have two processes represented here by throwing darts. And which of these processes would you prefer to have? Well, in these examples here, process A might yield a higher score, and it also might yield a higher central tendency, a higher average, because it's able to hit these higher values. But process B is actually more consistent and more predictable. And as a result, there's a lot less variation from that, and we have better control over it. So some of the things we concluded before about variation is that it reflects the area where we have less control, and also where we might feel the most pain in what it is that we're feeling within our process. That is, the degree of variation we have affects the degree or difficulty in trying to correct or fix that pain that we're feeling. As well, the degree of predictability affects the degree of control and comfort that we might feel. So some examples we had before is like thermostat calibration. Again, if you see that your thermostat that you're trying to cool or heat your house is consistently a few degrees off, well, that's easier to fix when you have something that's consistently off by a few degrees versus if it's going to be a high variation of sometimes it's too high a few degrees, sometimes too low, and back and forth. That variation is where you're really not feeling that comfort. But again, if you have consistency in how it's performing, it's a lot easier to control. As well, an example would be the uh, curfew that might be set for a teenage child who consistently might be coming home late after their curfew. Well, if they're consistently going to be late and they're consistently, let's say, 15 minutes past their curfew time, then it might be easier to discern some control that you can have. Maybe their watch or clock that they're using to determine when to come home needs to be reset because they might be using the wrong information or it's 15 minutes behind. And if you can adjust it, if they're consistent in being late, then it might be easier to control that. However, if there's a lot of variation, sometimes they're five minutes, sometimes it's 15 minutes late or 30 minutes late, or sometimes even come early. If there's a lot of variation, again, it might be a sense of frustration and, and discomfort because it's di more difficult to control when there's a lot of variation like that. Another example we talked about before was a discount store that tended to use the slogan, always low price as always. And again, they use that slogan because they're trying to attack the perspective of variation. That is, they know that variation is a source of, of discomfort for folks, and by consistently trying to show that they have lower prices and using the language of always twice in here, repeating it, is a way to reinforce the message that they have de they're dependable and they can give you more control over your shopping and your purchases because you can trust and rely on them that they're going to be more consistent providing low prices. Whether it's true or not does, is beside the point, but it seems to be in a very effective way of trying to communicate that to, to their audience and their demographic they're trying to reach. And they're trying to use that in a way to show how a little variation there is in the things that they sell and that's become effective for them. Okay, now let's begin to define and compare the two forms of variation, common cause variation and special cause variation. Well, even though I've described variation as reflecting the measure of pain or discomfort one might feel in a process, I would say that not necessarily all variation is bad as long as we can understand and control the variation. Process variation can be related in many ways to the amount of control that we have for a process. That is, if we can understand and control our variation, then that means we can have more control of the process. Now, there are two types of variation I want to look at next, and that is common versus special. That is, common cause variation versus special cause variation. So what we'll explore right now are the characteristics between each one. We'll go one at a time through them. First of all, for common cause variation. It's also known as noise, and it reflects the type of variation that is natural or random that would normally be reflected as a normal distribution. This type of, of variation is like a secondary source of process pain. It's not the primary source, like we'll explain next in special cause, but it's a secondary. In other words, it is some sort of pain. It is something we want to get resolved, especially in the way where that variation does not fall in line with the customer's requirements or the voice of the customer. But it is secondary compared to some of the other forms of variation, like special cause variation. It also um, reflects the impact of the process where it occurs within the process. It's generally going to happen in the process itself. 
Some examples would include some poor design to the process or normal wear and tear or a poor environment like moisture or temperature or other kind of things that could affect the, the things that are the equipment that's working through the process as well as maybe poor maintenance of some of the equipment or things that are used in the process. The normal type of things that could occur. Now next we're going to look at special cause variation. That's also known as signal or some sort of anomaly that we might see in our data. This type of variation is going to be an unnatural or something that's erratic and it's going to be reflected as a distribution like a non-normal distribution. Now as far as a source of pain, it's going to be a primary source of pain for us. We definitely want to look for things like this, these special causes that might occur within a process. We want to see that as a higher priority to fix those compared to the secondary type of variation which is the things that we might see as common cause variation. And also special cause variation is generally going to be something that occurs from outside of the process. Some examples would include like a power surge or extreme weather condition or system computer malfunction or maybe a poor batch of raw materials. Things that aren't a part of the design within the process but something that occurs from outside of the process and creates some sort of special cause that affects and creates some sort of variation within the process itself. So if we're going to look at an illustration here, in this illustration we're going to see that there are two darts that are on the left hand side compared to a bunch of darts that hit the dartboard on the right hand side. And we might use, as this, use this as an illustration to compare common versus special cause variation. First of all, for a common cause variation, we might say that's these types of darts on the right hand side where they're a lot closer to each other. There's more consistency as far as the distance between each other and the, dis and the consistency of where they're hitting in the target versus the other two darts that are on the left hand side, these might be reflected as special cause variation. They're much further away from the other ones. They're much more distant. So the common cause variation, this distance between these darts represent the natural or random variation we might see in the process. There's a little bit of variation that's occurring. They're not exactly at the same point, but they're all relatively close to each other. So it might reflect the natural or normal type of variation we'd see, or again called common cause variation. But the ones that again are on the left hand side, their distance away from all these other darts could represent like an unnatural variation. Something that is occurring that's much further away from the normal process that we would see, the normal performance of that process. So something has caused them to land so much further away from the other points. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. I'd like you to identify at least three different metrics that you use in your organization that tend to have some sort of volatility. So typically they're going to be continuous types of values or continuous types of metrics, but they have a lot of volatility within them. And then for each of those metrics, try to ask some of these questions here. First off, what has the variation been like for that metric in the last year? And how does that organization typically respond to the variation that they're seeing? Do they tend to overreact by quickly taking some sort of action on them when they see it jump or dip real suddenly? Or do they overanalyze it too much and maybe are too slow to take action? Also, what has generally been the reason for the variation observed in the metric? What do you see that the organization tends to, to use as a root cause for some of those, some of that variation, again, where it's jumping or dropping significantly? Are the reasons more often common cause variation or are they going to be special cause variation? So as an example, a lot of organizational leaders tend to find a reason for explaining certain jumps or drops they might see in the metric. And in that sense, what we're looking for is a special cause. But actually what could be occurring is it could be common cause. And if it is common cause, that is, if it's within the normal range of variation that is normal and natural for that particular process, then it's not going to be as easy to, to identify and fix that kind of variation. Variation. So which do you think you might be seeing within your organization for each of these three metrics? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.